Over two years ago, Ducati shocked the EICMA audience with a brand new concept. Of course, I'm talking about the Ducati Desert X. The Paris Dakar rally inspired motorcycle was riding on knobby tires surrounded by this retro styled white body panels and capped off with this beautiful twin round headlights that would be seen on the Kagiva Elephant. The motorcycle was stunning and the world wanted more. Hell, I wanted more. Well, those two years have passed, and today Ducati unveiled the production version of the Desert X concept, and damn does it look good. So in today's video, I'm going to give a breakdown on the engine, the components, styling, price, and availability. So let's go. Usually I start these videos talking about the performance and the engine, but the design of the Desert X is so good. So the Desert X is a modern interpretation of the lines of the enduro motorcycles of the 80s, right? Like the Kagiva Elephant, the Africa Twin, and the beautiful BMW built by HPN. You know, besides just looking modern, Ducati has made sure that everything on the Desert X is functional, right? The technical elements like the aluminum skid plate, the frame guards, or the 46mm forks combined with that 21 inch front wheel become elements that characterize the look of the bike. And the design emphasis has been placed on a few elements, with the front of the bike definitely standing out, right? The windshield merges with the headlamps and the double full LED sector based DRL is designed on its surface. And you know what? A lot of these bikes don't look good when they have the hard cases out back, but I think this bike looks especially good and I would love to see the same matte white kind of taken over from the body panels to those extra luggage carriers as an aftermarket pipe. But right now it's only available in that aluminum. Now let's jump into engine and performance. The engine of the Desert X has been plucked out of the all new monster and the Multistrada V2. The 937cc Testra Strada 11 degree twin cylinder unit has the Desmodromic distribution that delivers 110 horsepower of maximum power at 9,250 RPM and 92 newton meters of maximum torque at 6,500 RPM. You know what, I've spent more than a few hours on board the new monster and can personally attest to the engine being a great fit for this bike. More than enough oomph to get that front wheel up on any off-road environment and definitely on the paved. Now, as for the clutch, the 8-disc clutch is extremely light and compact, and while the gearbox drum works on bearings to minimize friction and improve precision and smoothness when shifting, thus contributing to a reduction in total engine weight of 1.7 kilograms compared to that of the previous version. And instead of pulling the gearbox out of the Multistrada V2, Ducati designed a dedicated gearbox to deliver the best possible performance for off-road riding. The ratios have been shortened overall on all gears up to fifth to ensure the best off-road behavior. Now, first and second gears in particular are much shorter, you know, 14.3 and 8.7% respectively versus the Multistrada V2. This is in order to facilitate the low speed driving phases of certain difficult off-road use, right? And sixth gear is properly long to facilitate highway while maintaining low engine speeds. This means a contained fuel consumption and increased level of comfort. And of course the gearbox works in conjunction with the DQS up and down. And obviously that's the Ducati quick shifter with a strategy developed specifically for this model active both uphill and downhill. Now let's jump into the chassis and all of the components. Now for the trellis frame lovers out there, it's obvious that Ducati engineered the Scrambler X around the tubular steel trellis frame, which works in combination with the long travel suspension to ensure proper effectiveness in all riding conditions. Now in terms of suspension, the Desert X is equipped with 46 millimeter upside down Kayaba front forks that offer a whopping 230 millimeters of travel with adjustable compression, rebound, and preload. The rear shock absorber is also from Kayaba and adjustable compression, rebound, and preload. This allows 220 millimeters of rear wheel travel through the aluminum swing arm. The suspension setup allows for a generous ground clearance of 250 millimeters, which should be sufficient for almost all demanding off-road riding. 
the Ducati X is fitted with completely new wheels for a Ducati, measuring 21 inches at the front and 18 inches at the rear, which is the typical size of an off-road bike. The decision to adopt tubeless tires was made to ensure maximum safety and reliability on the bike. Now, the original equipment tires are the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STRs, but they can be fitted with a more road-specific tire as well. Now, to stop this big bike, Brembo M50 monoball calipers with four 30mm pistons with a double 320mm front disc up front and a single 265mm disc with a double piston floating caliper is in the rear. Both are Brembo. As for electronics, there's a lot here, right? So the Desert X comes with six riding modes working in combination with four power modes, a full power, high power, medium power, and low power that all of them modify the power and responsiveness of the engine. The main new features are specific settings for enduro riding mode and the introduction of the new rally riding mode in addition to sport, touring, urban, and wet. The enduro riding mode, thanks to the reduced power and the specifically designed control settings, allow you to tackle even the most demanding dirt roads with greater safety and make it easier for novice riders. The rally riding mode, on the other hand, with full engine power and reduced electronic controls, it is designed for more experienced riders who want to fully harness the Desert X's off-road performance. Now, each riding mode takes advantage of the Bosch initial measurement unit, the IMU, to act on the intervention levels of the various controls, right? Modifying the character of the bike according to the choices and the ability of the rider. Now, the Desert X features EBC, which is engine brake control, and that's adjustable on three levels, which allow a different modulation of the engine brake according to the riding style and the use of the bike. Now, DTC or Ducati Traction Control is adjustable on eight levels, and the Ducati Wheelie Control or DWC is adjustable on four levels, and of course, ABS is adjustable on three levels. There is a lot of electronics going on in this bike, and that Bosch IMU has a lot to handle. But let's talk about the six different riding modes that adjust the motorcycle's performance based on the train, right? So sport riding mode is by far the best performance on asphalt that receives the full 110 horsepower. The bike becomes less powerful with smoother operations when you select touring, urban, and wet riding modes. But to turn things up on the dirt, Ducati has given the Scrambler X a rally riding mode that is dedicated to off-road riding, right? It allows the most experienced riders to harness all 110 horsepower with an instant throttle response to overcome any obstacle with just a quick twist of the wrist. Say that three times fast. Now, DWC is disabled and DTC is set to a low level to allow for a controlled rear wheel slip. ABS is set by default to level one, but could be easily deactivated with a touch of a button. And if you aren't feeling up to the rally mode, but wanna be in the dirt, Ducati has given the Scrambler the Enduro riding mode that is designed to be effective for less experienced riders. The bike is given 75 horsepower, but retains the rapid response of that throttle. The Desert X is equipped with a vertically oriented high resolution five inch TFT display, and it's positioned to offer the best possible visibility in stand up riding mode, right? The display is designed for the integration with the Ducati multimedia system, which allows you to connect your smartphone, to control music, phone calls, and even have turn by turn navigation. The display offers the possibility to choose between two information modes, right? Standard and rally. In the standard info mode, all the information necessary for road riding is displayed. You know, tachometer, speedometer, they're clearly visible, as well as an engaged gear. The fuel level and other information necessary for the journey. Now, in rally mode, the Tripmaster function is present, right? This feature used in rallies for navigation allows you to manually adjust the indication of the odometer using the buttons on the control block. As for ergonomics, it's really hard to judge a motorcycle's ergonomics without sitting on it. But looking at the riding position, both sitting and standing in the press video, it looks like Ducati nailed it on the Scrambler X, right? While the tank is very large, the rider's location is at the slimmest point of the bike, which is going to allow for the best maneuverability on and off road. Right, the saddle is at 875 millimeters high with a narrow inner leg curve and the initial suspension compliance, you know, the amount of suspension when it 
compresses the moment you sit on the bike, you know, it should make for a good contact with the ground. But there's always a lowered Seattle that Ducati offers for even more confidence for shorter riders. Like almost all new motorcycles from Ducati, there's a lot of thought put into the aftermarket accessories, right? Performance accessories like a rally specific saddle and an eight liter tank that sits behind the rear seat that mechanically pumps fuel forward to the main tank. That's one of the coolest things that I've seen on a new bike, right? In addition to that, we spoke about the luggage briefly, but the aluminum side panels combined with the top case give the bike a total load capacity of 117 liters, which should be more than sufficient for those long rides. Now don't come after me if I mispronounce it, but Terminioni exhaust will also be purchasable on the bike, right? Both a homologated for street use and one for racing. You know, the latter one increases the values of power and torque by 7% thanks to a dedicated mapping. As for weight, the Desert X comes in at 202 kilograms dry, which is roughly the exact same weight as the Norden 901 and 22 kilograms under the lightest weight Africa Twin. The ever important maintenance interval, right? The maintenance intervals are scheduled every 15,000 kilometers or 24 months with valve cleaning checking every 30,000 kilometers, right? This is properly fit for an adventure bike. Now, if you're just getting started with riding motorcycles, there is a Desert X A2 version, right? So that 35 kW version will be available just for A2 license holders. And if you need, you could take it to the, to the dealership and get that detuned so you have the full performance. As for price and availability, nothing is concrete yet, but I've got a few friends with initial deposits on them, and they say the price is going to be roughly around that $16,800 mark with first deliveries beginning late Q2. But who knows, I'm waiting for more information from Ducati directly, and there might be an update there. Now, here are my thoughts. There is a huge market for the Scrambler X right now, and Ducati knows it. BMW literally can't keep production running fast enough to sell their GS bikes. Husqvarna just launched the Norden 901 with more models coming over the next few years. Ducati has come into the market with something really unique. Something that looks vintage, but equally modern. And whether people choose to buy this bike and head to the double track or drive it to their local coffee shops, people will want this bike because it just looks cool. Now, as far as an adventure motorcycle, Ducati knows what they're doing, right? They have the Multistrada family, they've had it for decades. And I'm actually shocked that this is not part of the Multistrada family. And you know, for that matter, it's not really part of the Scrambler family because it's not on their dedicated website. It seems like the Scrambler X might be its own new line of bikes, which is really interesting to see what Ducati has up their sleeves. But would I buy this motorcycle? Absolutely. It's a great looking bike, it sounds fantastic, and it's ultimately going to be a great contender within the middleweight adventure segment of motorcycles. Now I'm sad that I did not put a deposit on it, but there are bigger things for me ahead that would not make sense for me to snag one right now, but never say never. I'm really excited for Ducati. This seems like a great motorcycle that's going to sell tremendously and I'm really looking forward to seeing them on the streets and hopefully getting the opportunity to be riding one myself. Ducati, if you're listening, you know how to get in contact with me. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. If you've not already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and always be in the know when new videos come out. Now, thank you all for watching, and go out there and ride safe.